In today's video, we're gonna edit out our reflection so that, well, we look a little more professional in our videos. We're gonna take this clip where my reflection is showing up in the TV and edit it out so that it looks like this. And then we'll add a TV. Sweet. Let's do it. So we've got our clip loaded up in Adobe Premiere here and I've already done a quick color grade on it. If you don't, if your window doesn't look like this, then you want to change your view over to color. And I've done a quick color grade, but as you can tell, the reflection is still showing up in the TV. I actually used to shy away from doing shots like this where I knew my reflection was going to show up, but these are like the most epic shots. And so I wanted to try to figure out how I could resolve this issue. And here's how we're gonna do it. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna create a adjustment layer. And then we're gonna drag it on top of here. And then we're gonna stretch it over to the end of the clip. And then we're gonna move our playhead over to the beginning of the clip. And let's zoom in. Let's say 150%, that looks pretty good. And so the only thing I want showing on this adjustment layer is the TV screen. I don't want anything else showing up in this adjustment layer. So the way we're gonna do that is we're gonna go over here and uh, click on the pen tool for opacity and just click around these edges. And you wanna to try to be as detail-minded as you can. I've noticed here that like right here, it kind of slopes down. So I wanna make sure these line up as good as I can make. It's not gonna be perfect, but you know, if we can get it pretty close, um, that's gonna look all the more realistic. So something like that. Now, if we go back to fit on screen, the only thing that's gonna show up, any adjustments that we do in this adjustment layer is only gonna show up in where this mask is. So let's go to basic correction and just bring our exposure all the way down. You could leave a little bit of reflection. I mean, if you wanna to try to make it look as realistic as possible, um, but just for the sake of this tutorial, let's go ahead and bring everything down. So let's bring our shadows down, blacks, just slam it all the way down. That way we just get rid of everything. And now that we have that, it's awesome. But the problem is that if you were to play this all the way through, this mask just stays exactly the same and it doesn't go along with this TV. So what we need to do is keyframe that. So let's go back to the beginning of the clip and we're gonna hit mask, the stopwatch on mask path. And then we'll go over to the end of the clip. You can do a shortcut key by hitting down arrow and that takes you over to the end. But then if you hit left arrow, it'll take you one frame over and that'll be the last frame in the clip. And we're gonna zoom in again to 150%. And now we're going to click on mask and then we're gonna drag these over And we're gonna drag these out to the same spot we had them in the first frame. And that looks pretty good. So let's see how all that looks. Oh, by the way, when as soon as I do that move, it auto automatically makes a keyframe right there on the end. So as an example, if I were to go right here in the middle and you see right here, or we've got our keyframe here and here, any change that I make right here is automatically going to record basically and make a new keyframe. So let's see if I click this and drag it over. Now we've got a keyframe right there and it would go up like that and back, but I don't want to do that. So I'm going to hit command Z. So we've only got our two keyframes, one for the beginning and one for the end. And let's play it and see if it looks good. It does look pretty good, but if I were to zoom in, I think 
it is a little bit off. So let's check that again. Yeah, right there. I'm going to click off of this mask so it doesn't. There we go. So you can see right about there, it kind of goes off and then it lines back up. We we'll just have to make another adjustment right in the middle. Let's do it. Let's stop right about here and click on mask again. And let's bring it over just a little bit. And then let's play it through again. All right, perfect. So now let's see about adding a TV because TVs are awesome. And you can get this stock footage. Motionarray.com has stock footage. There's just a ton of different sites for stock footage. So let's go ahead and click and drag this on. I'm gonna open this up. I'm gonna drag this over. I'm gonna match it up with the clip. We actually don't need this adjustment layer anymore, so I'm just going to get rid of it. Because we're going to replace it with a TV. All right, so we're in the effects. We're going to scale this down. Oh, let's first move our playhead over to the beginning. And we're going to try to match this up with our TV. So that's pretty close, but it's not exactly lining up and no amount of changing position or scale is going to help with that. So what we have to do is add an effect. And for this, we're going to use corner pin. Just drag that onto your clip. And then these are all your X and Y parameters. Upper left, upper right, lower left, lower right. You just have to keep tweaking these until they match up with your TV. So let's just try clicking and dragging around. That one looks good. That one's dragging over there. And upper left, let's bring it up a little bit. And now we'll go to the upper right side. Bring that up a little bit. And the lower left looks good. We'll see if that one Actually, it's not really lining up perfectly with that. Let's see if I just drag it over just a little bit. Oh, wrong one. Command or Control Z to undo. Oh, I'm on the right side. Okay. That looks good. Now let's move the lower right. So that looks pretty good to me. And I'm gonna see if this stays, if I don't need to do any changes to this corner pin throughout this entire move. I'm just gonna see if I can deal with it just with position and scale. So let's keyframe our position and keyframe scale. And then we're gonna hit our down arrow to go to the very end of the clip. Left arrow over once. And let's see if we can't just scale it up and move it around a bit so that it matches up. So let's see. If I click, instead of trying to drag this around, I can also click inside of here and just hit the up arrow and down arrow and it goes up 1%. But if I wanna do more refined adjustments, then I also hit command up and it does a 0.1%. Same thing with the position. So I can already see 
that I'm getting close, but that this is pretty much out of line. And my position and scale is not going to fix that. So I am going to have to adjust my corner pin, keyframe my corner pin. So here we go. I'm gonna go back to the beginning and I'm gonna hit the stopwatch on all four of these. Go back to the end. And let's see, top left needs to change. Nope, control Z. That looks pretty good. And what else? Bottom right needs to change. Bringing up my lower left just a touch. And that looks good to me. And like where we had, where we removed our reflection, I'm pretty sure it's going to end up being off somewhere along the line in this clip. So let's see how it goes. First, I'm going to render this out so that it plays smoothly. smoothly. Yeah, I can see that's off. If you want to watch this play back continuously so you can really refine your work, then what you want to do is click on this loop playback button and it'll just continue to loop over and over and over again. Once it gets to the end, it'll start back over. If you don't see this, then you can hit this plus button and click and drag it into your layout. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna zoom in to 150% again, and we're gonna find out where it's causing us some, some problems. So where is like the widest point where it gets messed up? See, that's where it starts coming back. So I'm gonna go I'm going to try right there to see if I can rein it in some. So let's scale it down just a little bit. Oh. Use my down arrow. And then my down arrow here. And I'm going to see if that works. No, not quite. I think we got it. There we go. Now we're cooking with gas. So I'm gonna caveat this entire tutorial and say that this would be easiest when editing on like a straight push in shot or shots where the camera is moving left to right. When you get into shots where the camera movement is angling or turning more complicated moves, it's gonna get a lot more complicated and time consuming. This isn't to say that it can't be done, just that it's gonna require more work. And to be honest, using a third party tracker like Mocha Pro would really be the most ideal for this kind of work. But in order to do all this, you not only need to know how to edit, you also need to know how to shoot your footage properly so that you can have an easier time in the edit. And to do that, you'll need to watch this video here. If you like this video, please be sure to hit that like button and be sure to subscribe to the channel for more content like this and hit that bell button to get notified when new videos are posted.